Please stop eating. <laughs> I hate it. I can what? hear it. I can hear you oh, smack you your gun in my ear. I'm a quiet eater. You're basically a walrus. What? <laughs> Welcome back to our Stupid Reactions, you idiots. I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. And this is his solar flare. <laughs> Please follow us on Instagram and Twitter for all juicy content. Ooh. Thank you for watching us on Patreon and follow our official Twitter account. And today we are doing a movie review. And this film has been requested since millennia. Long time. Long time. Really long time. Because it came out. Beginning of last year, or maybe even 2018, I think. It, it, no, it came out. It came out because it could have nominated. It could have been nominated for for international film. Yeah, for the international film. And okay. and people, T tons of people wanted it to be. Yeah, and they now are probably saying, "See, told you." Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, obviously it's super deluxe. Uh, an unfaithful newlywed wife, an estranged father. A priest, it sounds like a joke. <laughs> Walk into a bar. Uh, and an angry son <laughs> suddenly find themselves in the most unexpected predicaments, each poised to experience their destiny all on one fateful day. A lot going on. Yep, obviously, which is what happened in the film. Um, starring our first VJ Satapathy film, the Correct. huge megastar mm -hmm. VJ Satapathy. Uh, say a couple of these names for me just so we can get them. Uh, Fahad Fasil, Samantha Ruth Prabhu, Ramya Krishnan, um, uh, Mishkin Gayathri, and Bhagavathi Paramal. Yeah, obviously this is a huge cast of, uh, of characters. Of characters, obviously, because they uh, uh, intertwined. It was, a, it was a very cast-driven film. Obviously, one person wasn't driving this film. It was, no. it was just a ton of people. It was a very director-driven medium, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but Which I was, I was surprised by that. I didn't realize, and maybe that's just for my own stupidity, uh, I had thought the film was solely focused on... Vijay's? Yes. Gotcha. I thought, this, I thought it was just his story. I didn't realize it was basically like four stories happening at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah, which didn't bother me at all. It was just a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Uh, what were your initial thoughts, Rick? I have both really, really positive things to say, and then I have some really, really critique. I had some stuff, I had stuff about this movie that I think is brilliant, and I have stuff about this movie that I really don't like. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's some of you who are going to be saying you completely agree with me and then there's gonna be others of you who are gonna hate me when this is over so mm. just letting you know in advance uh, I'll, I'll, I'll that's that's my takeaway from it I, I really strong feelings in in opposite directions okay so we'll talk about because I thoroughly enjoyed the entire thing really yeah everything about it <laughs> almost everything about it yeah right, we can I'm talk about it because there here, here it comes watch all the threads in the comments about how I'm 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 different and I'm grumpy now. I and... think you weren't paying attention because if this if oh, you no. if you know if you look up for a second if you look to text your phone you are gonna miss it. You're gonna miss a lot of why certain things were there and you missed it. I was, <laughs> and if, if I did, um, trust me, I want to. Uh, but anyway, I'll tell you the things I, that I don't like about it. I'll explain and I'll tell you what I do like no, about it. But I would like to start with the directing because I love what? the directing. That is one of my favorite things to talk about with this movie is the uh, direction. The the director say his name for me. I need. We didn't say his name. Uh, a little larger, so I can make sure I pronounce it right. Uh, and I will butcher it, so forgive me. Theodorogen. Kumararaja. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yes. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna attempt that. I I liked his directing a lot. A lot. Uh, because it's one of my favorite things about the movie. He obviously he's very he I could tell you could tell he's a fan of Quentin. Not that he's trying to be Quentin, but great you could, observation. You could I agree with you. Tell he he loves Quentin. One, he's a bunch of homages to Quentin mm -hmm. in the entire film. Um <laughs> That's in all sincerity, my <sighs> I don't want to say it's my favorite. It is. I have two things that are unquestionably my favorite things about this film. Mm -hmm. And one of them is the direction. I thought the direction was 
fantastic. Yeah, the directing was phenomenal. I loved everything he did. I loved the shot, the cinematography in this. Whoever that is, we can uh, say their names because, man. Nerov Shah and, and P.S. Vinod. That was so freaking... It was... It was more be it was not like hyper realistic Correct. but it was more beautiful than real life which is how quentin Correct. does his films exactly great uh, observation it, and it was quirky mm -hmm. without trying to be mm -hmm. you know what i mean i didn't feel like this was a director trying to let people know look at what a quirky director i am yeah i got the feeling that this is just who this director is and yeah, some of the shots were just great I, the reason i love I, I liked being surprised and so he had a lot of shots that just surprised me like you'd, you'd be Back right. behind a doorpost, right? And the guy's about way down over down there. Down over there, and that's where the scene is. But you're hearing different stuff uh, along the sides. I, I, I like that a lot. The fact that it's just so the shots, it, like there's a bunch of people going on here, going between that door and that door. But you're all the way over here, and you're not really following them. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're following them. Yeah. Uh, but it was very like, almost chaotic, kind of like the story is supposed to be. But it all worked together very, very well. Uh, so I really. I really enjoyed that part of it. Uh, <laughs> Very original. Yeah, a lot of philosophical stuff in this that um, I, I I really enjoyed. Not that I believe at all. It's just that I, I enjoy what his vision for this was. That um, it's basic. Now, did he also write it? Yes. Yes, he did. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the uh, which doesn't surprise me. No, not at all. Um, and we could just, I want us to also talk maybe about your second favorite, I'm hoping, is Vijay Satapathy. Uh, well, you know, my second favorite, actually, I'll tell you, I can list off my favorite things. I thought the direction was fantastic and very original, very different. In fact, if there's, that's another takeaway I have from this is the uniqueness of this film is it's, this is unlike any movie we've seen come out of India. Oh yeah. Very original, very very unique, very pulp fictiony, very much. Because so. there's a bunch of stuff going on, different different people Correct. that you follow. Yeah, but it all comes together in the yeah. end. So that that uniqueness, I thought the the story, what was going on and what was being done premise wise was again the word just kept coming to my mind. This is very unique. This is very original. Uh, as far as the acting is concerned, he was the best part of it for me. As far as the acting is concerned, from from everybody was 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 well. I thought he did really well, uh, BJ Satapathy. I thought correct. he did really really well. I did hard. I didn't recognize him at all. Not at all. <laughs> which which was fantastic. It was really unique how they did it. Also, especially when he was putting on the sari, mm -hmm. that was such an unflattering shot that the director decided to go with, which was, I thought, a brilliant choice. But I also, agreed, and I also found it. A compelling that the work he put into that because I don't know how to put on a sorry but it looked like he sure did and I know those are not easy things to put on um, but the, the the girl who had the affair as well uh, I thought she did very very well uh, I, for, I, I can't remember which one she was though the one who at the by the way spoilers if you haven't seen the movie we're about yeah, to talk about stuff spoilers, so obviously, um, as usual the, 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 the girl who the, the movie beginning. starts off with at the beginning yeah 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 her so you you liked yeah, I liked her a lot. Her performance. Yes, a lot. She did very, very well. Okay, I just, I, I didn't. Why? What didn't you like about her? Um, I, there were just many, many times I wasn't drawn in to her portrayal of the character. I thought she was pretty flat a lot of the time. Disagree wholeheartedly. Yeah. I uh, think she did very, very well. I think actually, the entire, I mean, there weren't like amazing performances by all. But I thought as well, in terms of um, like, especially the kid, like the, the little young boys who were on the whole super bad yeah. trek with the porn, uh, which is basically almost they were interacting super bad, which is one of the films they actually asked for at the beginning. Uh, they were right. almost basically, I don't know if you've seen super bad, I have, acting I out it. super, super bad type scenarios as these kids. Um, and I thought it was almost on purpose sometimes, like some of the uh, the crying in this. That was, is my biggest... I think it was on purpose. The forced fake sobbing? Yeah, I think it was on purpose. Every single one of them? Yeah. It was not supposed also, to be real Also, hers crying. wasn't, like when she was about to get raped. Oh, no, 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 so hers, hers wasn't was forced. It. Yeah, hers was phenomenal. Uh, but no, all those other ones, yeah. And similar and, to how you love, for some reason, the acting in Dev Doss, but you don't like this. That's what I don't understand. Well, that's a completely different... No, it's not. This is all acting. No, the approach to this is not the same as Dev Doss. Mm -hmm. 
You really think there was a hyper- There's a thousand times better acting in this than there was in DevDoss by everyone. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> by everyone. You made the comparison to DevDoss mm -hmm. in terms of the acting. Because I think at certain points, he made them over, uh, overemphasize the crying. It happens actually a lot in Indian cinema, the, the overacting crying. But I feel like that was on purpose in this. I think that's open to interpretation unless we hear it straight from the director. That's possible. But as far as the comparison with DevDoss, DevDoss was definitively done in a theatric way that was commiserate to stage acting. The totality of the ensemble. Bad stage acting. Irrespective of whether you think it's good or bad. Bad The director stage. specifically articulated that the approach to every single cast member in this film was to be uber theatrical like stage. Yeah, but it's still bad acting. Irrespective of it being good or bad. Still bad acting. So in DevDoss, you have that intentionality articulated by the director for all the world to see. Whether you like it or not is absolutely an opinion, which is fine. You, you didn't like it, I liked it, that's fine. This, I don't know that such an approach was done. We have yet to hear if that was the approach the director wanted to take. And if he did, it was definitively hodgepodge. And if it was, that would help me. Since it wasn't articulated... And it's hodgepodge. And I saw moments where things were supposed to be believable for the majority of the time I felt. I thought that was my biggest thing. I, I had a really hard time with actors Quentin, trying to cry who were not Quentin able to do Quentin does it. the exact same thing in his films. He there does. has never been an actor in a Quentin Tarantino film I can show you. who fake cried so bad. I can show you in Django, my favorite Quentin film. When, <laughs> when they're the racist, when they get beat up and they're crying, that is oh, that is the exact same style. When the racists get beat up and they're crying, when, when they're attacking him with the dog. Okay. When, but then after that, they get beat up uh, by Django, and then not even close yes. to the fakery of the crying in this. Regardless. You can't destroy this whole film based off fake crying, so what else didn't you like? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Do you love how he just said, you cannot destroy this whole film? Mm hmm When did I ever say I'm destroying this whole film? You didn't like the film, just like you didn't like Anda Han Han because of piano. So that's why I'm asking, what else didn't you like? Okay. Don't say I don't like a film when I haven't said I don't, uh, but I, it, it suddenly becomes... You've seen that review. Uh, yeah, and let's, I what didn't bring up didn't Anda Honda Han. I don't. I could bring up Anda Honda because I'm the one that liked it. <laughs> so go on. What else didn't you like? Okay. I didn't like the thing I disliked the most was the message of the film. Why? What was wrong with the message? The basic bottom line message of this was coming from a. Uh, almost nihilistic, subjective, relativistic worldview. What part of that didn't you like? That's, that's, his, that's his message that he wanted to get by. Correct. You don't have to agree with the message. No, but there's this duality that happens when you have a moral to the story. On the one hand, Every director and artist and writer has the right to portray whatever they want to portray. Mm -hmm. And in that regard, I respect this writer and this director for sharing something from his vantage point that I believe he believes wholeheartedly. I really think that there's a message to the film and it's coming from his worldview. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I think his worldview is incredibly dangerous. What? What's, what's the worldview? That Subjective is? relativism. What's the, what is it? There what? is no good and bad. It's all perspective. That's not... Okay. That is not the overall message that he was trying to convey. He sums it up at the end in the monologue that's happening in the porn theater by the guy on the movie screen. Mm -hmm. And one of the things among many he says that underscores this worldview is at the same time on Earth, there's sunlight making day and there's evening on the other side. And neither one is good or bad. Hence, there is no good or evil. Things that used to be considered bad are now considered good. Mm -hmm. Good and bad has no moral absolute. It is purely based on subjective relativism. That is a scary perspective to have as your worldview. Oh, dear Jesus. He wasn't talking about, like, terrorism, Rick, or, or, or rape. He, 
<laughs> He's talking because there were there was these specific things that were happening in here. The kid who went ape shit because he wanted to kill his mother because he found her in a porn. Correct. That was once considered a taboo thing. The people in the porn industry that uh, like the, he said it specifically in the film. We people love watching porn, but they demonize the person in the in, in the film. That was one. Right. Transgenders. Right. Obviously, they're supremely discriminated against and lots of people think they're just bad people and it's inhuman right i know and that is incorrect and so it was once taboo and now it's not then uh, you can get into other ones in terms of the uh the the one that you can uh the affair is the one that you can get into certain people have a view of open relationships that's their worldview don't really care but um, that... Oh, I care. Yes, you could care, but that doesn't make it ruin the film. I have friends who, that is their worldview, and they live happily in relationships because they, uh, each person has agreed that that's how they think uh, monogamy is not how they want to live their life. They're not enforcing it on you. They're just saying, don't judge other people based off what they want. And the whole message of the film wasn't really that. It was that we're all one body and that we work together uh, as humans, and to and uh, it all works together in the, like a, a machine, basically. And so, what happens over here affects what's over here. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And there was a lots of points in that, like when the one shot, which was a brilliant shot in the film, which was the ants running up the wall, mm -hmm. and it shows uh, uh, that you know humans are supposed to be this superior being, and they were in there griping about. I believe it was either the affair or the transgender woman, and. Um, that we're over here griping about these minuscule things that shouldn't matter, but these thousands of thousands of ants can work together for the common good. And so that's really the whole point of the film, is to stop judging everyone. And also that's... Where I agree. Yeah. Based on what foundation for judgment is the point. That yes, don't judge. However the worldview that's being propagated in the end, it's all tied up in that monologue. Example, porn as an example. Mm -hmm. The ending of it was now let's, you know, now let's enjoy watching, which has a comedic element to it, but tying that into everything else and giving the, uh, tying up his mother's involvement in porn basically was creating this element of if one person over there likes to watch pornography and that person over there doesn't like to watch pornography, that doesn't make pornography bad. For that person, pornography is good. For that person, pornography is bad. I'm here to tell you pornography is bad. It's objective. It's not subjective. You can't. That's one of my least favorite things anybody can do to a film is take your view of something and just be offended by what they said on the screen. It's their message. They're not telling you to do that. This is not the president. This is them telling you their story of what they, they, that they wanted to convey. Well, I, I think it's more than them just telling you a particular story that they wanted to convey. I think he, like a good, that seems from the direction style and from the screenwriting, and like any filmmaker worth their weight is going to have a message. They they want to get a message across that's going to create change. You don't think this director wants to create change in society with this film? Yeah. It doesn't mean you need to be offended by it. Why, why, why don't I have the right to say I understand you? You can say that, but it doesn't mean you have to hate the film for it. <laughs> why do you, because I take exception to some things in a strong way, immediately summarize I hate the film? Because I can tell. Oh, I so know you, you don't like a film. Your intuition of my responses is more accurate than my actual telling you what I think of a film. Yes. Great. <laughs> I hope you keep that in the reaction. I will. Good. There's a... Because what you've just said is your opinion matters more than my truth no, of what I say. I can I'm really tell you don't like the film. You just said I hate the film. You said a moment ago you destroyed the film.
have mixed feelings about the film, that there's stuff about the film I really thought was brilliant, and there's stuff about the film I take great exception no, to, which is actually... You're taking exception to just not the film itself, you're taking exception to your personal beliefs, and that you don't like it. It's, it's, I, 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 I hate that when people do that to film. So when you watch a film that has violence on dogs, I can get upset with you because you don't like it, because it, it, it's a personal affront to you. I, and I can tell you, oh, Corbin, you're missing the point of the film. You're hung, you're hung up on dogs. I would never get hung up on that. Oh, Corbin, are you that self-deceived? That you, would get, you wouldn't get hung up on a movie where the movie had throughout cruelty to dogs. That wouldn't, that wouldn't get you... It's the story about the Chinese uh, festival that they just kill a bunch of dogs and that, that's the story? Then no, I'm not a... That's the story they're trying to tell. I don't like it, but doesn't mean I hate the film for it. Whatever. I literally just told you, you have the right to have that opinion, but not to hate a film for it. Destroying it. And I don't think you got the actual message of it. I think I did, and I just don't like the message, and that's okay. It's the same thing with the piano. You, you, you see something, and then the film is kaput because of it. I'm gonna go watch a review. I didn't destroy it. Stop interrupting me, because you're starting to piss me off. <laughs> and please keep this in the reaction. Okay. okay. Go, go, Rick. You, you're not gonna interrupt me, right? Can I talk now? Of course you can. Are I you, just, it was the interrupting I didn't like. Are you gonna stare at me? Or are you just gonna continue looking over there? No, I'm going to look wherever the hell I wanna look. <laughs> Let's be adults and talk about the film. I would which like is to do that. Okay, then stare at me, Rick! God, what are you doing? I'm trying it's to- It's not that serious! If someone says, I don't like that food, versus I hate that, they have meaning. Words have meaning. There's a reason they have meaning. What did you think about the alien, Rick? I loved the alien. You did? I lo that was one of my favorite Why things. Why did you like the alien over other things? Because it was so original. It was so weird. But that, that was part of the overall message. I thought that it would be a part you didn't like. Why? Just because it was out of the blue. I don't have a problem with things. I love things that are random. Are you kidding me? I love random. Why do you think I like Nacho Libre and Napoleon Dynamite? There's so many random, non-sequitur stuff that just makes no sense. I thought you wouldn't like that one. Oh, I love, I found the, the introduction of the alien was where I started to get really engaged. No, I, I enjoyed the alien part because um, one, it had, I like one, there was a setup for the alien. I don't know if you caught it in the film. Really? Yeah, there was a setup. On the TV, when the family was over, when they were hiding the guy in the fridge. On the, really? Yeah, on the TV, you could hear it say, and it did on the subs, it said, um, what was it? it? The aliens, we, we're not sure if there's still more aliens or if they've all left yet. On the TV, the, uh, a news anchor uh, wow. said that. Yeah. Now, did you pick up on that? And you, So you were expecting it, or you realized it after they dropped the alien on you? Oh, no, no I, we, we, my wife watched it with me, and she saw that on the screen when, when it went by, and she's like, did they just say there was aliens and they all left? <laughs> wow, uh, I was so focused on what they were going to do with the dead body in the refrigerator that I didn't even pick up on it. Yeah, she's good at picking up stuff. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the alien, but I thought it was really unique because one, it went with the overall message of... Um, I like that it didn't explain the alien. Me too. Because it, it wasn't like the story came out of, like, they didn't have to explain, like, where this person, alien, came from. They were just like, aliens are among us. Right. Just, I, I, I love just, that. Out of nowhere. Just so you know that the aliens are among us. Right. Uh, also, don't judge them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As well, which is... Or, the, or the clones. Yeah. Don't judge the clones either. So, it's basically an overall message of, you don't know what's going on, and there's aliens. Just letting you know that there's aliens. <laughs> now, did, here's something. I, thought, I didn't think there was a funny Rocky Horror. I thought there was a Rocky Horror tie-in, almost. I don't know if you remember Rocky Horror, because it's all a bunch of aliens. Right, yeah. And they all want to have sex. Right. All the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this director saw Rocky, Rocky Horror, Horror and maybe was like, so. Yeah, that's a good here. point. <laughs> that's a very good point. And here's something as far as his, his portrayal, VG's portrayal in that character. Did you, uh, first of all... Of the alien? He didn't no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm switching <laughs> over to something you said that triggered me to gotcha. that. Um, I found, uh, yes, like any portrayal... Uh, 
the it, very hard to watch some of those scenes where he when he's being called it. Yeah. Um, a lot of the, his scenes were, were. I mean, obviously with the, the some inspector, of my favorite, some the, of my favorite scenes. The inspector scenes yeah. were just brutal. Hard. As was, oh my goodness! Can I just tell you this? This is I just when I I laughed out loud when the guy died from the TV hitting him in the head. Oh yeah. I thought that was phenomenal writing and directing. I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant tie-in. Tie great tie-in. Everybody. Great. I, and I knew it when it hit him, obviously. But I then wanted her to leave. Oh, not me. And keep him handcuffed to the car. Oh, yeah. I was like, why are you staying with him? He was completely okay with selling you off to this guy so that you go will walk free. Well, she probably felt bad also because she did cheat on him multiple times. Maybe that's a justification for it. <laughs> I think because they're both pretty terrible people. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I think that's why. That's, that, that's that, a justification. It'd be one also. thing if she was like, uh, he cheated on her and she That's a justification I can accept. Yeah, she felt bad. But uh, I think since she was basically oh. the one that cheated on him and that apparently a lot of times. I think it was his intention and if it was, it worked. That lasted the drag out of is he gonna have sex with her? Is this creepy cop gonna do this to this poor girl? And I agree with you. Uh, her when I was disengaged with her was when she was in the car and he was fake crying. Although I did really enjoy his I was engaged with her in that moment. I did really enjoy his acting scene though. <laughs> Who's when they were uh, in the car and they she said pretend to act with <laughs> Like, cause oh, he, yeah, no, cause when he said, actor? yes, when, when she said, pretend I'm one of your friends. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious when he was just talking. <laughs> they made me laugh. <laughs> this was like, because I, 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 I thoroughly enjoyed a lot of this because of how dark comedy a lot of it was. It was a lot of scenarios similar to Quentin's scenarios where uh, these are scenarios you probably shouldn't be laughing at, but you are. Yes. Uh, which is something I really, really enjoy. I also ridiculously enjoyed all of the Star Wars references yeah. in this film. Now, I, and I have a question for you now in light of this and in light of what we know the Oscars have done. Mm -hmm. We've seen Dully Boy. No. We've seen Super Deluxe, which pretty much that's been the argument the whole time from everybody. When Gully Boy was the choice, the Super Deluxe people were like screaming mm -hmm. yeah. as to, so what do you, now that you've seen both, which of the two would you have chosen for the submission? I st obviously, we know that Gully Boy has not been chosen. Uh, it's not on the short list. So. Correct. And if you didn't know that, the short list the Oscars released, Gully Boy's not going to be nominated. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this one... My answer is going to surprise you. Obviously, this one, I think, has more artistic merit agreed. in terms of how well it was done. Uh, did you hear I just said agreed? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, but... I still think our views of why Golly Boy was nominated was the correct choice. It is the correct, and, and that's based on our understanding of the way the politics work with the And with I still the think academy. they made a mistake. It, 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 with the Academy. Yeah. Agreed. But taking, taking what we know about the politics aside, mm -hmm. you and I are, let's say you and I are, are Academy members, and we're looking at what India is presenting to us, and we've watched these two films, and we have to select one of these two films as the submission for India. Of Gully, of the two, based on the artistic merits, which of the two would you select, irrespective of name attachment, irrespective of uh, petitioning, drawing attention to box office, pure artistic merit, which of the two would you choose and, and select? Super Deluxe. As would I. Yeah, it, it has, I mean, it's, it has more... <clears throat> I, I would <laughs> much prefer Gully Boy. Mm. A hundred times out of a hundred, you say you want to watch Gully Boy or Super Deluxe, I'm watching Gully Boy. Depends on my mood. Yeah, yeah for, yeah, for me, it's pretty much all the time. Yeah. However, I recognize, as much as I didn't like some of the acting, especially the sobbing, which if it turns out that was an intentionality and I just missed that, I'm open to being corrected. Like I was, obviously, with Ren Beer. I came in with a presupposition about Ren Beer and Barfi. And watched, I've watched it three or four times and now realize I was completely wrong with that. Uh, and as much as I don't like what I believe is the moral message of the film, what I appreciate, I feel this way with Quentin a lot, because there's a lot of stuff that Quentin talked, Quentin himself, I'm not a big Quentin fan, personally. Oh, I, I love I, He's I, one of my favorites. Yeah, I, I, I know. I'm not a big person. I, there's a lot of things I've heard Quentin said. I'm like, wow, 
you're a dick. No. Um, oh, he is. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, but I, and again, going back to Sasha Baron Cohen, I have great respect for people whose artistry is one that I personally find repugnant or dislike. But I recognize that that was for me, it's the writing and the directing for this. It's so original. It's so outside the box. I feel like this was done in a way where the director and the writer was saying, I have a message I want to say, and I want to say it this way, and I don't care what anybody thinks about it. Hats off to you for that. Mm -hmm. That is an artist. Yeah. And I, I think I heard something about the director that this is maybe his like second film. So and I, th I think this would have had potentially... I don't know. It's really interesting to see. I'd love to talk to Academy members who have seen Super Deluxe and if they would say the same thing. I think they might. I think they might. This is his second directorial debut. Shut up. Yeah. He's uh, directed Seriously? and wrote One Thing in 10, and then he was a writer, writer, special thanks, lyrics, and then he directed Super Deluxe, and uh, yeah. Wow. It's quite impressive. The fact that... Uh, it's only a second film, and uh, yeah, because there's a level of art, there's a level of maturity <coughs> in the world. Also, there was a bunch, obviously, we didn't talk about, but like, I loved all the. And yes, ultimately, I didn't like the, the, the punches that he took at politics, religion, uh, just people in general, uh, like <laughs> the fact that you know this guy, this the, the father of the kid who stabbed himself, which was great. I loved that he stabbed himself because uh, um, it, it threw me off. I, I thought he was going to kill his mom. I thought he was going to kill his mom, too. I was like, holy cow. Yeah. Um, but the, 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 the priest guy who uh, I think was uh, yeah. against, he, he was he was denying it, and then he kept praying and praying and nothing nothing happened. Yeah, the one who was and, saved from the tsunami. And then he finally destroyed it, and then he got what he was looking for. So after he destroyed it, so obviously, uh, but then the wife said, she's like, I don't believe in God, but I was praying and you came with the diamond. So what does that mean? Right. And so it was like, he was basically saying religion is stupid and that religion is real. Reli <laughs> that his, his whole thing about. You don't know what's going on. Almost nobody does. Yes. It's basically, uh, it was. It reminds me, everything on its head. It reminds me a little bit. This is going to be a strange comparison potentially, but but one of my favorite things about PK was the way that PK so innocently is looking at what are the what are the apparent uh, contradictions and people just believing something just because they believe it without yeah. substantiations and. He did that in an, in an extremely intelligent way, and that's one of the things I did like about the script, mm. was his presenting something of, oh, really? So therefore, you believe that's true just because it, it agrees with your presupposition about your experience, yeah. which is an interesting, almost contradiction. I think that's, that's one of the reasons I like it. It, it, was a, it was a walking contradiction saying, basically, everything is everything and nothing is nothing. That's where I draw the line. And it's a disagreement. We can agree to disagree. I believe in objective reality irrespective of subjective perception. I don't believe this artist thinks that. He's entitled to that. I don't well, resonate with that I'm artistry. Saying is that I, I'm, I'm with you. You know, uh, we, we basically uh, believe the exact same thing. But it doesn't bother me that I have to watch something that I don't agree with. The, the reason it bothers me is because for me, I know that this has, it's the power of film. Film has the power to shape minds in ways no other medium has. And this has the capacity to take people down a path of subjective relativism, which is a dangerous place to go when you meet head on objective reality. I don't, I don't agree films do that. But oh, they do. We don't have to get into that. <laughs> We don't art, have to, we, art can change the world. Oh, I agree. Yeah, but also I don't. I don't blame films for what people do. You, not blaming the film. People have personal responsibility, but there is a level of contribution that's powerfully shaping in the mind of people that leads them to their behaviors when they live in a world that isn't helping shape them in the direction that would be healthy. I really enjoy hence. It, so. Hence, like, porn is bad, period. That's the note you want to end on? No. <laughs> <laughs> if, we're, if we're ending on a note, if we're, if we're ending on a note... I don't know if that's the note you want to end on. No, no, no. If we're ending on a note, one of the things people have commented on this before 
is they like how you and I in one reaction will go like we'll go head to head and be really pissed off with each other. You guys haven't seen the Oscars yet. Um, but if there is a takeaway, I do love the fact that you and I can get so passionate about something and think the other person's a complete blithering idiot. I do. But I know. But we <laughs> always we always end back up into a place of on porn is bad. <laughs> I didn't 